Good morning. Today we are getting ready to put in some fire lines. Uh, we're getting ready to do some prescribed fire burns on some of our wooded acres to help promote, uh, you know, oak regeneration and habitat. So we're getting ready to blow in some fire lines and use a skid steer to, to take some out and uh, put some in. Supposed to stop, keep going. <laughs> We're getting ready to burn prescribed fire. I've got, uh 2,000 gallon water wagon hooked to the tractor. It is for emergency use only. <laughs> oh, I hope we don't need it, but I also have a smaller burn trailer on the uh, back of this truck that uh, I got from the conservation department here that they loan out to landowners to do prescribed fires. We're getting ready to burn this side of the drive here. It's about uh, 10 acres or so, somewhere around there. And uh, the goal here is to keep it inside this patch of woods. We got a creek down there. We got a road right here. And we are gonna try to try to light this on fire to burn through the woods. <laughs> That's my brother-in-law, living the dream. I just lit the corner of this uh, block of woods here. Right here's our fire line. And got the drip torch, which is a mix between gas and diesel. So I'm going along here, just lighting, lighting the edge of the line here. This is a prescribed fire. Called the sheriff's office, all the neighbors, let them know what was going on. trying to promote more oak regeneration especially white oak and it'll come back and kill well the fire will actually kill some of the unwanted trees like hard maple and some other non-desirables mainly hard maple and elm those are the two species that we try to try to kill when we're doing this. I'm lighting the uh, fire line here along this uh, block of woods. We're actually close to the property line, as you can see. Just taking it slow, making sure the line stays good. We blew this line out with a black pack blower. We'll make sure that, uh, that it doesn't cross the line. As you can see, there's the line that we installed with the backpack blower, or well, that we blew out, rather. So yeah, that's what we're doing. And we've got about 200 acres or so that we're actually getting ready to do a prescribed fire on. So yeah, we're doing things, living a dream. So fire always burns faster uphill when you're lighting the fire make sure that uh make sure you're prepared because when it goes up the hill it goes fast if it has the fuel just the way the way the ground lays and the way the fire acts it'll burn the fuel above it faster than if it's going downhill We you think, Gabe? You want my honest opinion? Yes, sir. Living the dream. <laughs> Aren't we always, every day? 
We better go double check this line over here. <laughs> you, you don't like the smoke, do you? That I think. Yeah, now I know what smoke is lung. Hello, dear. <laughs> Poor dear. Where are you going? <laughs> that deer did not want any part of that. I can remember years ago, the conservation department used to have fire towers that they built all along the higher points uh, of the counties so that uh, there were people that was actually set in it, kind of like a huge deer stand, really, really high. And they would set in there and they would have shifts where they would watch for smoke for people who were lighting the woods on fire. And what they would do is they would radio in, they had a map and they would radio in when they saw a fire one in one part of the county or another and send out the foresters and the fire department and whoever else to help put out the fires. Because back years and years and years ago, it was common to burn the woods off every fall to help in spring and summer just seemed like all year that people would burn the woods off burn the ticks kill the snakes sometimes people would use it to hunt deer or wildlife just like that deer just walked up a while ago so what they would do is they would call in the fire department and foresters to come uh, put these fires out like i said either they were deer hunting uh, using fire, killing ticks, killing snakes, you name it. The old timers thought that this was the best thing for the woods. Well, one of the coolest things about it is they were probably right now. Killing deer, snakes, ticks. Well, ticks, yes. Snakes, no. Um, I like snakes. Well, actually, I don't like snakes. Snakes don't bother me until they, uh, until they surprise me. <laughs> but, uh, I don't agree with trying to kill animals with fire, but I do agree with that fire is a great tool for managing the timber. And just so happens that now the conservation department, the forestry department is promoting fire, like what we're doing for forest health. So maybe the old timers did have something that they knew that the rest of us didn't know. My grandpa was probably one of them he was the one that liked to fi start fires but we're seeing the decline in white oak regeneration and a lot of people are thinking that it's because we don't have any fire in the woods anymore uh, back in the day they just lit a match and left now that's not good prescribed fires is the only way to do it now put in a burn line make sure you have a burn plan make sure the humidity is right the wind this fire is burned slow and good. This is what we want. So, fire can be a really, really, really helpful tool. And it can be a major, major problem. We want a helpful tool. We don't want a problem. So, all right. Living a dream. fire is doing really well burning really good not too fast 
not too slow. We are almost done with the first area here, the first unit, burn unit that we have lined out for the day. I'm putting the, bringing the fire back together. So I'm on the, technically the downwind side and the fire will burn faster up the hill obviously but uh the wind was blowing out of the south now it looks like it's changed a little bit down here on this we're along a creek here it's changed a little bit looks like it's coming out of the east but it'll burn up this hill hopefully like it should and the two fires will come together and burn good, have a good burn. Got some pretty nice timber in this patch of woods. Here's a nice, uh, it's like a red oak. About 32 inches diameter at breast height, or we say DBH. how we measure it when we're going through the woods doing an inventory on the timber. We've got a uh, built more stick that we use. It'll show us the diameter on there. So as you can see, I'm just walking up this little drain. There's our burn line, our natural burn line. We're using the water. Well, there's a little buck. It's not too little that uh, the other guy that's helping us saw. Boy, she kind of stinks. Or he. Yeah, that's a nice eight. <sighs> nice little eight pointer. Nothing major. What stinks? Oof. So we had a problem this year with EHD. That's called epizootic hemorrhagic disease. That happens on drought years. When it's real dry, the deer will obviously go to water. They go to water every day. But they go to water on dry year, and there's, there's usually a mud bank exposed along creeks, ponds, and that will cause the midge fly to, to live there. And deer come and drink water there. The midge fly bites the deer, and I think it's within 20 or 14 days, something like that, the deer will die. It will actually go back to water because it's hot has a fever and will die near the water near water we had a pretty bad year of that this year had a pretty bad drought and now i've got to get out of here because i'm getting the ball bar fence beside me and I need to get away from him. Oh boy. Okay. Now I'm back to our burn line. That was put in by our helper, Justin. Burns really fast uphill, as you can see. All right, living the dream. So this is what it looks like when the fire has went through the through the woods. We've got a pretty good little charred area here that's what our goal is hopefully this will kill back that vegetation that will hurt uh, the reproduction of of some of the white oaks and the oaks that we're trying to promote living a dream